Greetings, groovy people. Welcome to the channel. I'm the self-proclaimed blue dragon, and this week I am working on a raffle piece, which I am going to be donating to True North, which is a local art studio here in Portland. And I am donating this because they were gracious enough to accept me in an outdoor artist market event. 50% of the proceeds are going to be going to a charity so I figured that would be kind of a cool thing to create and what I'm going to be doing is you know the drill my art is primarily character drawings but I generally speaking don't mat them or frame my pieces I do try to sell them when I can but for this raffle I've actually got a frame that I found in the garbage years ago when we still lived in the St. Louis area. This I've had since pre-COVID and I've already sanitized it anyway. I, I, you know, used alcohol and stuff to clean up the frame years ago. <laughs> and I wouldn't necessarily suggest doing that right now just due to the current pandemic, so. But what I thought would be nice is because this actually came in a very heavy metal frame and I'll be showing that at the end of the video. Since I had found it anyway, and I haven't really found a purpose for using it. I'm going to refurbish a little bit and then donate this so that they can use it for the charity. Um, the only problem is that it did get, um, the matting got a little bit gross. The frame itself is awesome. But yeah, I wanted to make this matting a little bit cleaner. I couldn't find any acrylics because I think I got rid of a lot of my stuff or I just can't find it, which is a bummer. This is permanent. It's light fast and waterproof. Um, I've had this for years. It's just Dr. P.H. Martin's white um, India ink. I, I don't know if this is vegan or not, you guys. Um, I bought this before I went vegan. I, I don't think it's a very good idea or sustainable to just junk everything you have just because you your personality or your moral choices have evolved. Um, I think that's wasteful and disrespectful to what went into creating what you had. So I'm going to try to use this ink to paint um, and clean this up a bit. We'll see how it goes. If not, I'm going to go and buy some acrylic. I can't get this open, you guys. I'm so weak. I've been exercising when trying to work my muscles, but... To no avail, apparently. <sighs> oh my god. you get nothing you lose good day sir Don't suggest doing what I just did. <laughs> just gonna get in there one way or the other. Just chose the hard way. I'm just using the back of one of my uh, larger paper pads. Might have been nice to go with a softer white, one that isn't quite as bright. But this is what I have. So... You use what you got. My primary goal is to cover up any water stains. And just to brighten this up. So I might need, this is actually fairly thick, but I may need a couple coats just to make sure that it looks nice. I'm gonna move my tape out of the way. I shook this up fairly well beforehand. I want to try to avoid having too many brush strokes, so I'm putting it on a bit thick. I don't know if that means anything or not. <laughs> I 
make sure you get the beveled edge. I don't care what happens to the other side of this because it is not the presenting side. See, it's starting to move around a little bit since I can't hold on to it. There's some easy ways to fix that. I love how ink dries fast. It's probably why I do like acrylics over oil paint. I am impatient and I don't like to wait for stuff to dry. When I'm doing a project, I'm sure that I might enjoy oil painting if I took the time to actually try it out properly, but I haven't had the uh, space. Uh, you really need to have a well-vented area. We have that now, but don't have too many of the materials. My partner has some somewhere, but I'm not sure where he put it. It was uh, when he was trying to do some Bob Ross paintings to kind of relax. So I'll have to ask him what happened to that. One of these days I'm going to try oil painting, but just haven't really felt the desire to. Though I certainly admire what people accomplish with oils. It's no uh, insult to the medium. What works for some people doesn't always work for another. Normally I wouldn't use ink for this. This is kind of expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had it for years. I never use it. So I figure this is the perfect project to pull it out for. Yeah, okay. I think that looks good. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, I'm awful. That's going to be an even bigger bitch to get into in the future. Oh god. Oh, what have I done? Alright, I'm going to clean up this mess a bit and I'll be back later. Alrighty, let's get on to the next stage of prepping this image and get ready for the frame. Before I even sketch this whole image, just as kind of a side note, I had measured the parameters of the window in the matting to make sure that nothing important was going to fall outside of that. I did make it a little bit bigger than that window just so that I would have a tiny bit of a bleed and be able to center it where I wanted. But that's just kind of something that I did before even sketching the character on here and painting the ink and doing all that, which I'd done in last week's video. 
Now I'm just cutting it down to the border to leave a little bit of white on the outside so that I have a place to properly secure it to the matting. I didn't record this part, but before I took the frame apart, it had several different pieces, so I made sure to photograph how all the parts fit back together. It had these little L-shaped metal pieces that slide inside the metal parts of the frame in a specific place, and then the holes line up with the screw holes on the L-shaped metal brackets, I guess, for lack of a better term. Maybe they are called brackets. But I wanted to make sure that I was able to put the frame back together properly, so I took the precaution of photographing it ahead of time. I've since disposed of those pictures because I didn't think I was going to need them. But I just wanted to kind of make that clear. If you're not familiar with how your frame goes together, it might not be a bad idea to take pictures of that, just so you can put everything back together properly. The other thing that I need to do, and that you could do also, is that although this wire is adjustable, I don't want to adjust it. I wanna make sure that it's just in the proper place to begin with. So before you put your image in the frame and get everything put back together, make sure that the wire or whatever type of uh, hanging mechanism you have that's going to be where the photograph or the image hangs from, make sure you just have that on the right side, either top or bottom or wherever the wherever the hell you want that, that wire to be. Make sure you position your image in the correct rotation so that, you know, it's not gonna be hanging upside down whenever you hang it on the wire, if that makes sense. Uh, it, common sense, but it's something that's easily overlooked when you're trying to put something together and you're not thinking about that. So what I end up doing is I get all that stuff put in place. The way I secured my image was I used acid-free scotch tape, just regular old tape, and I just taped it face down on the matting, only in the border areas. I, you saw that I had a little bit of a white border. I, I know it's acid-free tape, but that's important because if it's something that's gonna last a while, if you've used a material that's not UV sensitive, not light sensitive, that's not going to fade, it's archival in other words, then you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that your tape is non-acid because otherwise eventually it'll start eating away at your paper. It also came with these little metal pieces that are bowed and very flexible that you push down and slide between the metal frame and the backing of the image. There's a piece of cardboard that comes with it that you put between your picture and the matting. So, so the way it's layered is the matting, the picture, and then whatever uh, cardboard backing or whatever backing you have with, with this particular frame. But to keep all of that secured inside the frame from jostling around, it came with, uh, one, two, three, four, five, it came with about six of these flexible metal pieces that, that you push down and you slide underneath the frame and then they bow back up to hold things in place. So after everything's put together, you, uh, you know, I just found myself screwing the pieces back in place and now it's time for the reveal. I think she turned out pretty well, though I am gonna say I think I prefer the larger image that I'll show now. Um, I did two versions of this because I was really happy with how my character design turned out and how, you know, I don't normally draw anime eyes like that, but you know, like the way they probably should look. I have my own kind of stylized version of doing it. This first one was more of like the test run. And then I did a second version where I think I shaped her eyes a little bit better. And I was a little bit more careful adding a little bit of gray where the whites of the eyes were to help tone that down a little bit. Um, and I think I was able to like per perfect blending the skin tone better, which I'm, I'm infamously bad at blending any skin tone. So I, I think I did a better job of that on the second image versus the final piece that was for the raffle. Next week I'll be back with a video. I'm going to be sketching Karen Blue. I'm getting ready to update my cast page on my main website. And she's going to be a, kind of a main character in the next act on Comic Fury, which is going to be titled Forging a New Path. 
And so it's time to get her biography actually up there and running. Let's go ahead and close out. Peace and love, fare you well, and keep on trucking.